Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Why does the audio suck so bad? It's because I'm using my Windows 8 tablet to record this video. And uh, that's one of a million reasons why a Windows 8 tablet is better than an iPad. But uh, that's a video for another day. So what we're doing here is we're going to be creating this awesome looking button. Now, before we get into it, I want to apologize for the audio. Like I said, I'm using the built-in one on my tablet. And I'm going to apologize for the video. This is only going to be a 720p instead of 1080p. Um, just a little bit of a background, I'm actually in a different part of the country. Um, my sister is studying like business science or something in a university like 20 steps away from where I'm staying right now. So unfortunately, um, I can't make the quality videos that I usually do. But I'm going to make one anyways. This will be the third tutorial uploaded in my weekly, well my, my full week, my seven day tutorial marathon. What I've done here is I've created a simple GUI with a cool looking button. And what you guys can see looks like it has this nice 3D effect, right? Now when you hover over it, you guys can see the color changes to let you know that you can click on this button. When you click on the button, you guys can see the image changes, and then when we release the button, it goes to the uh, the default the default image, which is pretty cool. Now this is not something that I really do. It has a bunch of events. It has four events, mouse entered, mouse exited, mouse pressed, mouse released. So we're going to be recreating the same button, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just, I'm just going to delete all the code and then start from scratch. Okay, so I've cleared out everything, and what I've done here is I've created a new package called images. Now this is going to give me an error because I don't have the many images in there, but whatever. Um, we're going to head over to Photoshop. So if you guys don't have Photoshop, I suggest you torrent it or something. Uh, go to File, New. Um, we're going to go with the width of 85 and a height of 40 just because I think that's a good size and simply click on OK. So I'm going to zoom in by about 500%. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this tool over here just below this cursor. This is called the rounded rectangle tool. If you right click on it, you can select one. So rounded rectangle tool it is with the radius of 3 pixels. We're just going to click on the top left hand corner and then draw out the image to whatever size you like. So I'm going to go with that size and fill it with a color called pomegranate. Now, if you head over to flaturicolors.com, you guys can simply choose your value. So I'm gonna go with hex, one, two, three, four, E, F. And if you simply click on pomegranate uh, or alizarin, we're gonna go with alizarin and pomegranate. If you click on one of them, uh, sometimes it is a bit bugged up, uh, whatever. But if you click on it after a few tries, it'll eventually copy the, the color to your, um, I forgot what the heck it's called, but if you just simply just click on here and then paste in God damn tablet. If you simply click on that color chooser and then simply paste in the color, you guys can see you've automatically gotten the color. So I chose pomegranate and uh, alizarin. I'm going to use pomegranate as my background and alizarin as my foreground. So if we head over to here, we're going to set this one to pomegranate, which is the darker red. Now once we have that, we can go ahead and duplicate this layer. So right click duplicate layer just whatever you can choose anything and we're simply going to go up to the full and then change the color to the lighter color which was the alizarin so once you have that you can simply transform it by going to edit and then um, oh wait actually you have to change the layer to rasterized so right click rasterize go up to edit transform scale and then simply drag up from the bottom to the top however high you want. There you go, you guys can see our 3D effect. What you guys can notice is that our uh, rounded corner does not look very good when you do it with this method. So what I would suggest doing is uh, creating a new layer and then drawing up a new one by simply redrawing it to that exact size. There we go. And then once again, just change the full color to the lighter color. So that's one way of doing it. I provided two ways. Um, whatever, you know, they, they're so close. When you zoom out, it looks pretty much like the same thing, but obviously the one is more uh, more accurate. So once you have your background and foreground, you can already see it coming together. We're going to simply select the text tool, and we're going to change the red to a full white color. We're going to go with 16-point font, and I'm just going to type in button. And I'll move this layer above the rounded rectangle too, if that happens and you can see the button text show up. So we're just going to centralize it. Uh, Photoshop does have this nice snap to center. 
there you go, that looks pretty good. So we can zoom out and take a look at how it looks at 100% scale. Looks very nice. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and save it as a PNG. Now you want to name it something like Button uh, Button Default. So Button Default, click on Save, None, there you go, pretty much done. Head over to NetBeans, and we're going to drag and drop the Button Default image into the Image Package. We're going to right click on our label. Now keep in mind, I made this label the exact same size. Oh, hang on guys. Sorry about that guys, my neck is a bit sore. But uh, I've made this J label, I've just drag and dropped the J label into my GUI. I've made it the exact same size as the canvas pixel in Photoshop, which was 85 by 40. So if you right click on your label, go down to properties, and then scroll down and you just set the width to be the exact same as what you'd set in Photoshop and the height to be the exact same. This will fit perfectly. So if you right click on this label, go down to properties, and then just change the image icon. So it usually comes with uh, the app package by default, then you right click on it or left click, go down to images, and then you select your image, job done. So now when we run it, you guys will see an awesome looking button. So this is just one image. What we still need to do is we need to add, add the hover over and then also the mouse pressed. So let's go ahead and create the hover over effect right now. So we're going to head over to Photoshop. We're just going to edit the same, same picture. So let's zoom in here a little bit. A little bit, uh, I mean 500 percent. What we're going to do is we're simply going to be changing the color. So let's click on this rounded rectangle. Um, let's go right click on it, blending options, and then click on color overlay. And we're going to change this color. So from the color that it is right now, um, we're simply going to change it back to what uh, the original color was, which is Alizarin. There's a hex code right there. And then we're simply going to move it over a little bit. So move it over to make it a little bit lighter. There we go. Click on OK. That looks fine. And we're going to go ahead and do that with the same one at the bottom. But first, we're going to change this white color to the pomegranate. There we go. And we're going to change, and we're going to change it to, once again, blending options color overlay and then we're going to make this one a little bit lighter in color as well. So if we simply click on this, click the pomegranate color and then move it over to the left. There we go. That looks fine. Click on OK and OK. Go to File, Save As, save it as a PNG and just name it Button Hover. Click on Save. Yes. Make sure the compression is set to None. And there we go. Then we're simply going to drag and drop the button hover image into the images package. We can remove that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our J label, scroll down to events, and then mouse, and then mouse uh, entered. Let's go with mouse entered because that's when your mouse actually enters the J label, which you can then, um, you know, see the change the the image. So we're going to click on that. We're going to type a little bit of code. The code is image icon. So image icon. And I just give it a random name like ii is equal to new image icon. And you guys will most likely have to add in the import, which is no big deal. Then we're going to say j label one, which is the name of the label with the button in it. Dot set icon and then in the brackets you put in ii now in the image icon brackets you type in get class dot get re how do you spell resource and then in the resource brackets i know i spelled it wrong you specify a string which is the url to the image. So R E S O U, I think that's how you spell it. So the link is slash images, which is the name of the package, slash, and then the name of the image, which is called button underscore hover. And don't forget the dot PNG on the end. Or whatever you chose, whatever extension you chose. So now when our mouse enters the range of this J label, it'll change 
to to that um, it'll change to that that image. So now what we want to do is when our mouse exits, we want it to change back to the default. So right click on it, go down to events, mouse mouse exited. And we're just going to copy and paste the code because I mean I'm not going to retype this. My neck is really sore from the position that I'm sitting in. You're just going to change button hover to button default. And now when you run it, you guys will see it'll have a nice hover over effect, which works really, really well. There you go. You guys can see where the mouse enters. It changes to a lighter color, and when it exit, when it exits, it goes back to the default color. Now the next thing and the last thing to do is add the mouse pressed icon. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to go into Photoshop, and when we press our button, we're just going to get rid of the one layer. So what I'm going to firstly do is Control Z. Control Z. Well, it's actually Control Alt Z. Go back to the default, and we're simply going to remove the top layer, um, just because it's really easy to do. Go to Save As, and then save it as PNG as button pressed. Yes, no compression, and then once again, drag and drop the button pressed icon into the images folder. Right click on the button, go down to events, mouse, mouse pressed. So when you click on your, your mouse button, it'll change to the button pressed.png. So just remove hover, replace it with pressed, and uh, that's almost it. So now let's run our program. As you can see, when you hover over, we've got the hover over effect. And when we press our button down, you can see it changes to what we said. So that's fine and dandy, but it doesn't change back to the default after you let go of your mouse. So what we need to do is we need to add another one. Now the events, right click events, go down to mouse, and then mouse uh, mouse released. There, I think they're showing step up on TV. We're just going to change button hover to button default. I'm really not sure what show it is, but it's got that moose guy in it. So I'm pretty sure it's step up. And I saw some dancing, so. Yeah, I think it's definitely step up. Okay, so run a program, hover over effect, fantastic, mouse pressed, mouse release, goes back to the default. Now what you guys can do, um, instead of, actually, yeah, what you guys can do, it, instead of changing it back to the, the default icon, which is a little bit buggy, if you guys think about it, um, because technically your button still hovered over the image, right? So what you can do is you can change button pressed when you release your mouse. Um, sorry, button released to button hover. So that'll make it look more realistic and abide by the laws of physics. Um, so let's wait for this to run. Now when we click our button, you guys can see it changes back to the button hover which is completely correct because technically your mouse is still hovering over your button. So now we have a perfect, beautiful button. You guys can take it a, a, you know, a step further, make your own graphics, make your own effects and stuff. But it's a very nice button. Now obviously if you guys want to code the button to do stuff, all you simply do is right click, go down to events, mouse, and then you can select one of these mouse events. So you can go with mouse click, mouse release, and just put all your code in here. So you can add in like, um, S out, you click the button. So you click me. Run this. And you guys can see when you click the button, it'll print out a message to the console saying you clicked me. So there you go, you guys can see you created your own custom button. Much better than the default one that uh, they provide you with the Java Swing application. But uh, anyways, hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video.